Hey, this is BB. I'm here with my dog Ruby. This is Speed Dating for Ghosts. We're gonna go again. <laughs> Hello again. It's nice to see you. I'll just put your name down. And you can go right in. Alright, who's next? We'll go to the Room of Liars. I'm worried that it's a double entendre and that it actually is like L-I-A-R-S. But whatever. Um, I'm sorry, Ruby. I know that you're asleep, but I gotta, I gotta roll over. My tailbone's falling asleep. The Room of Liars looks like a conference hall. This is not a good, not a good start. The kind you might see in an airport hotel. There was a meeting of regional managers here yesterday, followed by some couple's 65th anniversary in the evening. They left a few balloons behind. Worn plush stacking chairs are set on either side of a lacquered of lacquered oak tables. In one corner there are wine glasses and a metal pitcher of water, alongside a stainless steel urn for coffee. Ghosts don't need coffee. One particularly nervous ghost is holding a cup anyway. Some habits never die. The bell rings and a ghost appears. Oh no! Ah! A ghost! Oh god, sorry. Of course you're a ghost. We all are. I'm still not used to this whole being dead thing. <laughs> I'm not used to it either. Nothing prepares you for this life, except this isn't life. Post life? I feel so lost. When I used to have anxiety attacks, I'd focus on my breathing listen to my heart beating. Now I can't breathe. I don't even have blood. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, take it one step at a time. I wish I knew. I think it's pretty neat because I have hypochondria and not having to worry that if my breath and my heart sound weird to me, that it's not my neurotic brain lying to me. What? You're kidding, right? We are ghosts caught between life and death. Isn't that terrifying? I can see how it's scary. Yes, of course you can. When I was alive, I was so scared of ghosts. It started when I was little. A movie I saw. I pushed my bed against the wall. I told my mom. <laughs> it was so I wouldn't fall out. I couldn't sleep unless my back was against that wall. Um. Interesting. That is very cute, I guess. It didn't feel cute at the time, though. I was just afraid. I'd picture the worst ghosts, devils, dark entities, hateful things floating in the dark, hiding in mirrors, watching, standing behind me. And now, now I learn they were there. Everyone who told me that there was nothing to be afraid of, they were wrong. Ghosts are real. And I am one, but they didn't do anything to you is the point. Um, it's a lot to accept. <laughs> did you come here to get fucking counseled, or did you come here to make out? I need to know. Yeah, it is. Are you afraid of ghosts? Not anymore. What changed? I found things to like. <laughs> I want to find things to like. Every time I think I'm happy, even for a second, the anxiety knocks, says, I'm back from my break. Did you miss me? <laughs> the bell rang and scared it, poor thing. Oh, that was just the bell. Phew! Thank you for listening. I guess we'll talk more in a bit. Hopefully the other ghosts are as nice as you. Apparently not. All the other ghosts are saying people are mean, but everyone's been pretty nice so far. I gotta move my headset. Ah, it really presses on my ears. Uh, I need to get a better set, but I don't want to spend the money, so... Another ghost appears. Some cool-ass looking bird. Well, look what we have here. The ghost voice creaks like ancient wood. <laughs> Should I do the voice? My name's Spooky Peter. <laughs> he tips his hat. Dust spills off the brim. How do you do? I do okay. I'd wager otherwise. Like, maybe you're scared. Like, maybe you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Spooky Peter laughs. Or coughs. It's hard to tell. Um, you definitely are spooky. Thank you for saying so. I've been doing this a while. My record of hauntings goes back as long as the door. Since the Black Death took me in 65. 1665. Um, I thought the plague was earlier. 
The Black Death came in waves, lingered for centuries. I was a doctor in London, that's why the bird shape. Uh, plague doctor sh face. I knew I'd got it the second the chills started. I was dead in days. Last great gasp of bubonic on the island. Uh, some 68,000 went with me. Fucking hey, dude. Ever since then, I've been spooking folks. <laughs> Even been in books. Not always by name, mind you, but you can tell when it's me. The top hat, the fear, all hot and sick. Nobody spooks him like Spooky Peter. Uh, I try my best. Do you? Guess I see it. The potential, I mean. I can help with that. Teach me your spooky ways. I don't fucking need your help. Oh, why is that? I'm already scary. Spooky Peter leans in to get a better look at you. More dust falls off the brim of his hat. Then show me what you got, kid. Turn milk into worms. Make an unplugged stereo blast music. Pull your face off. Pull your face off. Spooking like that may shock him, but there ain't no art to it. You go all the way, the living have nothing more to fear. And when they aren't spooked, what's the point? No, the spookiest spooking's the stuff that eats at you. Makes you doubt what you hear or see. Makes you wonder what could be under that bed. It's never as spooky when you see what it is. So how's that for a lesson? <laughs> what else you got? Slow down there, bedsheet. Learning to spook spookum takes time. If a legendary spookin' is what you're after, and Spooky Peter's gonna take you under his wings, so to speak, you'll need a solid foundation. Vera does it better. Fuck you. <laughs> it's all about knowing your audience. A good spookin's in the details. The bell rings. The bell. It means we move on. Guess I'll be seeing ya when I come back around. Like the plague. A thick layer of dust now covers the table. Fucking nasty. <laughs> Clean up your shit, spooky Peter. Another ghost appears. It's a shark! Wanna make some money? Excuse me? What use is, is there ghost capitalism? Like, what is this? Excuse me. Do you want to make some money? Dollar bills. Cashola. You know the stuff. I understand what money is. Good. Then you understand why I want more. Why do ghosts even need money? Technically, no. We don't buy things, but money buys something else now. Favors with the breathers, influence, information. The living always want the money, the living buy plenty. The name's Leon, by the way. I rob banks, don't judge. You rob banks? Nice to meet you, Leon, fuck it. Don't be making this personal. We rob a bank together, that's it. No more contact, at least not for a couple of months. <laughs> but you don't have the option to be like, no. Um, but I don't rob banks. Yeah, I hear ya. Who robs banks? I sure don't. Wink, wink. Stop that. Stop what? Robbing banks? Already said I don't rob banks. Wink, wink. <laughs> You're making me mad. A powder keg, huh? Maybe I don't want you on my team after all. Can't have any liabilities. Gotta minimize the risks, you know? <laughs> then scram! Aw, oh, come on. I was just kidding around. In all seriousness, are you really not interested? I mean, what's more exciting than robbing a bank as a ghost? Who else can offer that kind of fun? You probably like, um, Drea. Nobody but Leon. I'd like to know more first. If it'll get you on board, I'm an open book. The bell rings. Nuts. <laughs> Aw, nuts. Time to switch seats. Don't worry. I'll be back. We got more to talk about. These guys aren't as, as interesting as the, f as the first two rounds, I don't think. The second round begins. The other ghosts. Holy, they were they awful. Leon's just a creep and spooky Peter. That name is earned. Oof. Also, I think I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Kayo. Or Kyo? Kyo. Sorry. Um. <laughs> need to be sorry. No need, sure. I'm still sorry, though. My anxiety gets the best of me. And social situations are tough. This one especially. Um. Spooky Peter has been around. I think he's actually just dust. My rule? Never trust anyone who wears a hat. The stuff he said to me. 
the hairs behind your neck know me. It's best to hide in the corner of their eye. It's what I was afraid of as a kid. He said I had potential. If he sees something in you, I'd worry. Go to a medium. Try to get rid of that something. That might be good advice. I'm not a confident person, but I'm rarely wrong. You should stay away from him. <laughs> Your speed dates are going well, then. At best, dating ghosts is frustrating. Everyone asks the same things. How did you die? What was your life like? If we were alive, the questions would be like, What kind of food do you like? What's your favorite movie? Dying doesn't make people more interesting. It's Videodrome, by the way. My favorite movie, I mean. That's a fucking... That's a creepy-ass movie for someone with anxiety. First of all, I don't know if, if you've seen it, but, like, I don't even remember the premise. I just remember that, like... The, the movie and, like, the, the TV were alive and, like, he, like, it's, like, fleshy, I remember. Anyway, um, <laughs> long live the new flesh. I do know what it is. Ah, you know it. Sometimes I feel like a VCR. It doesn't make any sense, though, if you have anxiety, because that movie is really fucked up. Obsolete. Out of date. No new stories to tell. Um, we can find some new stories. Maybe. Or we can just rewatch old ones. You miss things the first time. So, do you want to hear how I died? If you want to talk about it, might as well get it out of the way. I was in film studies, working my way towards a PhD. In debt, always pretty sad. I had good friends, though. I was always studying. One weekend, they convinced me not to study. They said we should go to the lake instead. I couldn't swim. I never learned. You see where this is going. I drowned. Everything went black and quiet. I woke up dead in a fancy wooden box under six feet of dirt. <laughs> they buried you alive? No. How did you drown? First I was in a canoe. Then I was in water. Then I was in dirt. After I died, my spirit separated from my body like it does for everyone. I fell right through my coffin, through my own body, down, down, down. Into hell. Into the bedrock. It was so dark. That sounds awful. It was. I will never forget the confusion, the helplessness. I seized up. This is why I want to be cremated. That, that actually stopped me from falling. When I freaked out, it was like my whole body became corporeal. Not flesh. Just like, you know, how if you concentrate, you can still pick up objects like that. So your anxiety kind of gave you power, except I was the object, and the earth was holding me. It was so quiet there, stuck in solid rock. How long were you down there? Yeah, Christ on a cross, it's hard to say. I didn't know much at that point. I didn't even know I had died, let alone what was happening. Where I was, drowning wasn't as bad as that. No, it wouldn't be. Listen, I'm sorry I've been such a downer. I promise I'm not always like this. I was thinking... Maybe we could go out sometime. Somewhere quieter, maybe. With fewer loud bells and spooky peters. Um. Yeah, fine. Yeah, sure. Yay. I can't wait to do something with you. That isn't talking about myself. Sorry. The bell rings. See you after we're done. Are we back to spooky peter? My spooky protege returns. Well, we'll start talking to spooky fucking Peter in the next episode. See you then. Bye.